This video is a brief beginner's guide to raising sheep on pasture small scale. In this video, I'm gonna give you three things that you need to prepare for before bringing sheep to your farm. And I'm also gonna share the negative effects that we encountered when five years ago, we brought sheep back to our farm without fully preparing for these three things. This video is geared towards those raising sheep on 30 acres or less. I'd also like to call on the sheep owners that are watching this video right now to leave in the comments what breed you're running and one piece of advice that you would give to beginner sheep farmers. I asked the same kind of question in my previous video on sheep versus goats and you guys left a gold mine of information in the comments so I hope you'll share your knowledge in the same way in this video. A free resource I have for you if you're in the research process of bringing sheep back to your farm is the 13 things you need to raise sheep. It's a free PDF download available in the description box below. Number one on the list of things to manage for as a sheep farmer is parasites. Beginner sheep farmers generally have a one to three year grace period. The pasture is totally clean and untainted by sheep manure and the parasites that reproduce through that manure. But as your sheep graze across your land base, those parasite loads will build slowly. And regardless of the breed you're running, if you're running in a set stock situation, you're going to notice a massive uptick in parasite problems. Here are three quick ways to be proactive about parasites. Number one, set up a rotational grazing program straight out of the chute. Once your sheep are back at your farm, you do wanna give them a little bit of time to adjust. But once they know the sound of your voice and can follow a feed bucket, try to put them in a grazing rotation. Number two, try to avoid penning your sheep up every night. But if you do have to pen them every night, make sure that there is no grazing space within that pen that you use. Number three, and probably most importantly, if you are going to use dewormers on your farm, make sure you use the correct dosage rate. Ironically, the dosage rate on the back of the packages is extremely misleading. It is a maintenance dose and not a treatment dose. I'm going to link down below a chart by Clemson University with the correct dosage rates for the various dewormers that are currently available. Something else to know about parasites is that ewes are the most sensitive to them around lambing time and 30 days after lambing. Be especially aware of this and manage accordingly. So how did we get these wrong five years ago when our sheep were delivered at our farm? Number one, we had no rotational grazing program in place. It was a set stock system. Number two, every night we penned our sheep up and there was plenty of space for them to nibble at grass while they waited for us to lead them back out to pasture the next day. And number three, we were using improper dosage rates for the dewormers we had available to us. 18 months into sheep farming, our land base hit that saturation point. We lost half of our adult ewes and the majority of the lamb crop from that year. It was not until until we implemented rotational grazing, correct deworming practices, and kept our sheep out of the shed every night that our death rate went from above industry average to one third of industry average. I have a dozen videos about grazing sheep and setting up grazing systems for sheep, and I'm gonna link the playlist to that down below so you can binge watch those videos after you're done here. Number two management preparation you need to make is for containment. Sheep are difficult to contain, not as hard as goats, but definitely not as easy as cows. Five strand barbed wire is not effective containment for sheep. At our farm, we have a six inch woven wire field fencing. We bought it on 330 foot rolls at our local farm store. And within that perimeter fencing, I will use the poly tape to create my daily grazing paddocks. If you cannot expense the expensive perimeter fencing up front, don't let it discourage you from getting into sheep but I would advise that you use portable electric netting over poly tape or poly wire as a means of containment for your sheep. Now, when I do give this advice, I usually have a few Greg Judy followers call out the fact that he contains his sheep on a single strand of poly wire. But what needs to be understood in this context is that Greg Judy is running on large acreage in very rural settings. Now, when you're running sheep on small acreage, you're usually right next to a neighbor or right next to a highway, which means that when sheep jump out of a paddock, instead of having 50 or 100 acres of grass to enjoy before bothering anyone, they're usually jumping straight out of the paddock onto the highway or into your neighbor's yard. So keep that in mind and make your own decisions accordingly. How did we get it wrong when sheep arrived at our farm five years ago? Well, we just assumed that five strand barbed wire would keep them in. And it did for about 30 days until the grass was greener on the other side. And the other side just happened to be our neighbor Debbie's yard. We also had a lot of predator losses because predators, coyote, wild dogs, neighbor's dogs could easily slip in and out of that five strand barbed wire. We ultimately upgraded to that field fencing for a perimeter that I just referenced. We did it in small sections as our budget allowed, and it was the biggest but best investment we made in permanent infrastructure for our farm. Number three on the things that you need to be prepared to manage for as a beginner sheep farmer is predators. Predator pressure is really going to vary from farm to farm, but it will be an issue, whether it's coyote or just the neighbor's German Shepherd. Livestock guardian dogs are the gold standard for flock defense. That said, I do not have a livestock guardian dog. I mentioned the perimeter fence before, and since installing the perimeter fence, we have only lost one sheep to predators. In just the season prior, 
prior to that installation, we lost four sheep in one season. We have two large pet dogs that roam the perimeter of our farm and will bark at anything that approaches the fence line. I also run my sheep alongside a cow herd and once those mama cows drop their calves, they will not tolerate canines in the paddock. They will even run off our pet dogs. Predators are a serious issue, so you need to have a defense plan in place. And please watch this video next where I talk about sheep versus goats for your homestead.